A number of commentators over the last decade, maybe two decades, have talked about uh, what I think of as skills development. I mean, do you have the requisite skills to be able to enter your first job? Can you read well? Can you write well? Um, do you have the ability to code, uh, et cetera? I actually think we oftentimes confuse skills and skills development with education. And education is actually designed to actually encourage the individual to consider questions they hadn't considered before, to actually be able to assemble a vast array of information and then to synthesize that information and to come up with perhaps uh, what one would think of as new answers. It's not about learning the most recent technique. And the challenge is, is that if you only talk about skills development, the way knowledge is produced these days, a generation is 18 months. And so that means by the time you've actually finished school, oftentimes you're already behind the curve and some of that information is obsolete. If you're really truly educated, you then learn and you know how to go about pursuing the new acquisition of information. And that information that you can then synthesize and apply to what you already know means then that you're not behind the curve. You're keeping pace with the change uh, that's always occurring in, in both in technology and other aspects of American life. I love STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. I actually can remember uh, circa 1998 being at a meeting at the National Science Foundation, and it wasn't even STEM yet. It was SMET, S-M-E-T, Science, Math, Engineering, and Technology. And uh, we were all sitting there going, are you sure you want to call it SMET? And we came back a year later, and uh, it had turned from being SMET to STEM. And we go, why is it now STEM and not SMET? And they said, well, believe it or not, we were up on Capitol Hill uh, asking for money for SMET. And for one congressperson, A, goes, why do we want money for SMUT? Uh, misunderstanding and mishearing what was being said. And they realized at that point they needed to reorder uh, the alphabet. And so hence was born uh, STEM. The long story is, is that actually it still took another six or seven years for STEM to actually gain some traction because a lot of both public policymakers and others thought of STEM uh, as related to stem cell research and they were hesitant uh, to get into the political cultural wars over stem cell and stem cell research. Um, my colleagues in the sciences uh, persevered and we now are uh, here all over the place that we need to make investments in science, technology, engineering, and math. While I actually believe we need to do so, I also realize that what I think of are these grand challenges in the world, these gnarly problems that require us to really mobilize a whole array of talent and research. Uh, we can't answer those questions uh, only by asking uh, what a scientist would think of it or an engineer. I mean, the, the example I give is one of my favorite examples. I was in a meeting in Atlanta some years ago when I was still at Emory University, and we were over at Georgia Tech, and our friends at Georgia Tech and uh, colleagues from Emory uh, and former officials from the CDC were sitting in the, water, in the room talking about water and the need to come up with a solution to clean water. And they were telling a story about a West African village. And in this West African village, there was a need for clean water. The women would trek every day down to the river that was contaminated, and that was actually leading to uh, all kinds of infections that could be prevented. So one of the uh, international agencies provided research and dollars for them to then drill a well. Well, the engineers came in, did their survey, and drilled the well right in the middle of the village. To their surprise, the women walked past the well and kept going to the contaminated river. And, um, and the engineers were mystified. Finally, the engineers thought, well, maybe we should bring in some anthropologists and gender experts to talk to the women. They finally did. And they asked the women a simple question. Why are you walking past a well in the perfectly clean water to go to the river with the contaminated water? And the women said, look, we understand that this water is better here, but you don't understand why we walk to the water. It's not only a utilitarian function of retrieving water, it's a way for us to get away from the men folk in the village, from the children, to break up the routine of the domestic household. For us to have then this well right there actually doesn't serve our purposes. And so they actually moved the well, they drilled it farther away to uh, both assist the women uh, and allow them to have their cultural practices maintained uh, and to also provide clean water. But it's a case where in this case, the scientists need humanists, and the humanists need a scientist. And as I think about the kind of problems that we craft and the ones that we identify, it really, it's really about what is the question being posed? 
who are the best interlocutors to be part of answering that question, and how do we go about assembling the team? And so for me, at the very least, STEM is important, but all over the place, when we look at those grand challenges, those gnarly problems, I do come away thinking scientists need humanists, and humanists need scientists, and we need both to help us solve these problems. Thank you.